I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc. Listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Michael Rivero, editor and founder of WhatReallyHappened.com. Welcome back to the show, Michael. Thank you for having me. What's your take so far on how Donald Trump is doing as president and his latest appointments to the cabinet? Well, uh, Trump right now, unfortunately, uh, he's out there in Washington, D.C., trying to drain the swamp. And what he didn't realize is he invited a lot of the alligators into the White House itself. And we're now hearing allegations that the White House chief of staff is one of these people who's been leaking damaging information to the media. Uh, John McCain is a, a suspected leaker. And they, they've got Donald Trump uh, basically dealing with all of this internal strife so much uh, that he's not really paying attention uh, as the war hawks push forward on the uh, war agenda with Russia, China, and Iran. And I, I think that's a serious, serious problem. My main concern about Trump, even before he was elected, is that he's coming into the job d- as dangerously naive as Jimmy Carter was. Uh, too much of Donald Trump's worldview is based on what he's been seeing on the TV news. And even though he now is aware the TV news is lying about him, he has not yet done the uh, mental exercise of going back and saying, what else has corporate media lied to me about? Well, John Oliver's gone as far as to run ads on Fox News trying to push certain points of view because he knows the president's watching. Well, uh, that could very well be uh, the, the, the case, but John Oliver uh, is, is clearly part of this pushback against Donald Trump, and I can imagine that Donald Trump probably isn't paying much mind there uh but it it is a white house unfortunately in a state of chaos uh and and we we have a government that is divided against itself uh the uh the liberal political establishment that's had power for all these years and even elements within the gop party uh don't want to see their particular apple carts upset by president donald trump and we're, we're hearing the democrats talking about invoking the 25th amendment uh, trying to say that Donald Trump is is crazy and mentally uh, unable uh, to uh, fulfill his job. And it, they could literally start a, a civil war if they keep up this nonsense. Is Vice President Pence's main job right now explaining Trump's speak to the rest of the world? Well, the traditional role of any vice president over and above being president of the Senate uh, is to backstop uh, the president. Uh, there have been some times when Pence seems to have stepped out of it uh, and is sending out his own messages regarding policy. There is no law that prevents him from doing that, but it is considered uh, uh, bad manners. But then at this point, we have so many people within the government who are out there uh, criticizing uh, Donald Trump. Uh, normal tradition in past presidencies is that an outgoing president will stay silent for at least one year before criticizing his successor. Obama obviously didn't follow that. He's uh, uh, full on with um, uh, basically they're still ramping on up. One of the funniest things that's happened uh, is apparently somebody has set up a website uh, to create this fantasy world where Hillary won and all the little liberal snowflakes can go on in and live out their fantasy life uh, that they won the election, that Hillary's the president and Donald Trump has been uh, sent into exile. And I don't know if it's satire or if it's just plain pathetic, uh, but we definitely have a country that is badly factionalized. It's a reflection of a government that is badly factionalized. Uh, and uh, we're, we're seeing this apex of so many people who have their own personal agenda and uh, do not feel that they're under any obligation to try and work for the common good. 
uh, or or uh, try and uh, you know s- uh, support the president. Uh, we have people out there that are that are acting like they think they should be the president. Reince Priebus, obviously being one of them. Uh, it's now come on out. He was behind the ejection of Michael Flynn. Now he's targeting Steve Bannon. Uh, Priebus wants to have uh, a Priebus-only domain in the White House so that he can control the White House. And if he controls the White House, he can control Donald Trump. Is there really a battle for power in the White House staff? Uh, it's not so much a battle for power uh, outside of Trump and uh, Priebus, but it is a battle for influence and control of the information uh, because if they can control the information getting to Donald Trump or coming from him, they can control Donald Trump. Kennedy had to deal with the same thing where his, uh, his own uh, staffers uh, were trying to filter the information about what was going on in Vietnam. Uh, certainly the CIA lied to John Kennedy to get him to go along with what became the Bay of Pigs invasion. So it is a reality, and it's one of the areas in which Donald Trump really didn't understand the differences between the world of business and the world of D.C. politics. Is the CIA really in control of the U.S. government or trying to take control of it? Uh, They're always trying to be in control of the U.S. government. Right now, it almost feels like there really is nobody solidly in control, that it really is a faction fight. Uh, the corporate media on one side, the war hawks on the other side, the pro-Israel faction on another side. Uh, and uh, it, it does feel like uh, there, there isn't a firm hand on the tiller, so to speak. Uh, and Donald Trump's got to correct that. He's supposed to be the boss, and he's got to get his house in order. And as I said earlier in the interview, my concern is that Donald Trump is so absorbed with all these attacks on his lieutenants, uh, and his ongoing war with the corporate media, he's really not watching the war party uh, as, as they try and force this war agenda forward despite him. Are there any complaints about the high cost of security for Trump because he's bouncing between the White House, New York, and Florida? Um, I, I imagine that probably somebody will complain about it just because they want to have something to complain about. Uh, but Donald Trump, my understanding is Donald Trump is paying for his own private security, uh, which operates inside of and with the Secret Service protective detail. Uh, the uh, issue in New York, of course, is that the New York City is concerned about the cost of the police presence around Trump Tower. But I, I have a sense that Trump is going to be spending less and less time at Trump Tower and even down in Florida uh, as time goes on. So I, I think in the long run it's going to be a non-issue. How close are the ties between Russia and Trump, and have they been greatly exaggerated? They have been greatly exaggerated. Obviously, Trump and Putin have a great deal of regard for each other. But interestingly enough, apparently evidence has now surfaced uh, that Putin was sending money to Hillary Clinton and John Podesta in the lead-up to the election. So it wasn't uh, Trump being uh, assisted by Russia. It was Hillary and Podesta. Uh, but you're never going to hear that from the American corporate media. Are Russian missiles now so advanced they could get through any U.S. missile defense system? Yes, they are, and actually that's been a a development for quite a while. It's not the missiles themselves. It's the reentry vehicles, because the normal uh, doctrine for a MIRV nuclear attack missile uh, is you have the booster boosts the uh, upper assembly uh, onto a, a ballistic path toward the target. And then above the booster, there is a device called the bus. And this is a maneuverable platform that holds the actual warheads. And the bus will aim itself at a target, release a warhead, aim itself at the next target, release a warhead, aim itself at the third target, and so on, up to the maximum of eight warheads they're allowed to carry under current international treaty. Once it's released, the MIRV vehicles follow a predictable ballistic path to the target. And it's on that basis that the entire U.S. ballistic missile defense system is based. But Russia has uh, come up with a maneuverable reentry vehicle. And the way it works is the, uh, the MIRVs are, are off, uh, they're off balance. They're heavier on one side of another. So they tend to fly through the atmosphere slightly skewed, which gives them a side vector. And then by simply rotating the MIRV, they can maneuver it on its path to the target. It can corkscrew, it can dipsy-doodle, it can uh, jump up and down. It's very much the same system 
that was used to allow the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo spacecraft to maneuver through the atmosphere, even though they don't have wings or conventional control surfaces. And uh, the, uh, China apparently is now adopting this same approach. Once that MIRV is released and it is able to maneuver, uh, none of our existing ballistic missile defense systems will work against it because it's impossible to predict where that target is going to be seconds uh, ahead of time in order to get an intercept. Uh, the only thing that stands a chance against these maneuverable uh, MIRV vehicles is some form of zero time of flight weaponry, uh, such as a uh, high powered laser uh, or particle beams. Uh, but efforts along those lines uh, have been very, very difficult because particle beams are distorted by the Earth's magnetic field and optical lasers suffer from a phenomenon called thermal blooming, which is that as they travel through the atmosphere, the atmosphere absorbs part of that energy and starts to roil, uh, and that causes the beam to diverge uh, and spread to a very wide uh, distance by the time it reaches the target. Now, there are military lasers, but they're short-range only. A long-range military laser uh, is still a pipe dream. Does Israel have nukes? Yes, they do, and as a matter of fact, we ran an article on uh, our, our web page today about how some of the documents released from Colin Powell during his term as Secretary of State include yet another confirmation that Israel is, in fact, in possession of nuclear weapons. How many? Uh, the estimate in this uh, particular document was about 200. Uh, there are other estimates that say it's even more than that. Uh, they have a bomb factory underneath that uh, nuclear plant at Dimona, which was the secret that uh, Mordecai Venuno uh, released to the world uh, years ago, for which Israel's kept him in jail uh, for ever since. But Israel is still maintaining this idea of nuclear ambiguity, which is kind of a ridiculous position for them to be taking. Uh, certainly, uh, when the government, uh, former government of South Africa collapsed, documents surfaced there showing that Israel had tried to sell a clandestine nuclear warhead uh, to South Africa, and it's thought that the Vela incident, which was a nuclear detonation in the South Atlantic, was a joint Israeli-South African test. So with all of that information around, it's ridiculous for Israel to go on saying, maybe we do, maybe we don't. The main reason they do so is because uh, United States law says that our government may not give any assistance to any nation in possession of nuclear weapons technology that refuses to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and allow IAEA inspections. Israel won't sign the treaty. They will not allow inspections. Uh, so under the Symington Amendment to the Foreign Appropriations Act and under the Glenn Act, the United States government is committing a crime every time they send a single penny of U.S. taxpayer money to Israel. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after the break. Keep informed. Receive our weekly recap of thought-provoking articles, podcasts, and radio delivered to your inbox for free. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa, located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero, editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. Michael, are smart TVs recording your conversations? Well, that certainly seems to be the case. Some smart TVs even have TV cameras where they can uh, watch you. And ostensibly, the idea is the information is being collected and sold to marketing research firms to build up a profile of things you are likely to buy. Uh, in order to tailor the advertising on TV and on your computers uh, to your particular consumer profile. Where people are very concerned is that these systems can be hacked by people with nefarious intent, whether it's the U.S. government or cyber criminals, uh, and uh, possibly uh, gain information that can be used against you uh, or even used to blackmail you. We know one very common approach that pedophiles like to use is to somehow get a picture of a child in a state of undress and then threaten to make that picture public 
unless the child agrees to do more uh, for them uh, over their internet connection. Uh, and uh, so it, it's an area of some concern. Apparently, uh, over in Germany, there was this internet connected uh, doll, uh, and now Germany is telling parents to get rid of it because apparently it has been compromised uh, by pedophiles to try and get access to children there as well. So th this complete surveillance society has brought with it risks uh, that nobody really seems to want to address in this rush to finding uh, uh, the next big thing in advertising and marketing. What about those audio activated devices that you can already get to turn on your lights and, and to search the Internet for you? Are they dangerous? Uh, they are a potential danger. Uh, we know that the Amazon one has come under criticism uh, because if there's somebody living in the house named Alex or Alexis or Alexa or Alexander, uh, the device will activate spontaneously uh, and based on the conversation going on, will order things from Amazon that the people don't really want. Uh, and certainly the idea that this uh, device is taking your spoken word and sending it to a computer uh, is concerned that your discussions are being monitored. The same thing applies to the voice command on modern cell phones. Uh, your voice is not being analyzed in the cell phone itself. It goes over the network to a large computer system uh, that interprets what you're saying and sends it back to you. But obviously what you just got done saying is now in that central computer system as well. Personally, I don't use these uh, I don't use these myself. I don't either. For the same reason, I actually saw my phone come on once because of something said on television. Yeah, that that was another issue with the uh, uh, the uh, Alexa one. But apparently, Amazon is now going to have an option where you can change uh, the on word for the device. So you can just pick some kind of nonsense word uh, and uh, and sort of guard yourself that way. But it's another example of how these things were rushed into the marketplace without really being thought all the way through. What one single thing can you do that would help prevent breast cancer that nobody's being told about? You know, get out in the sunshine. Uh, vitamin D uh, is a good cancer preventative. And uh, obviously, the skimpier your bikini top, the better. Uh, but unfortunately, the cancer industry uh, is uh, absolutely does not want anything out there that can prevent or cure cancer uh, that they don't have under their control. And th there was a big stink some years back uh, regarding a treatment called hydrazine sulfate, which could really help you survive uh, the symptoms of cancer. And it was subject, I mean, it's used in Europe, it's used in Russia, it's very popular around the world, but it's very low cost. You can get gallons of this stuff for pennies, uh, and so there were tests by the National Cancer Institute of hydrazine sulfate. They knowingly violated the testing protocol uh, in order to come up with the desired result of saying, we don't see any benefit from this at all, so go on back to that very expensive uh, chemotherapy and radiation treatments and these other drugs we have that go for hundreds of dollars per shot. Michael, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you for having me. My guest has been Michael Rivero, editor and founder of WhatReallyHappened.com. You're listening to The Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Questions for the show can be emailed to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on The Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.